Hi, this is Chris from Higher Energy Spirit Art, and today I am going to show you in parts how I make my plush fairy dolls. This video is going to be the body. And here I have taken out the pattern for the doll, and I will link that somewhere below so you have access to that. I do my dolls with fleece. Now you can do it with any type of stretchy material that you feel comfortable with or that you like. I would not recommend fraying fabric. So I usually go with either a felt or a fleece. Now here I'm drawing out the pattern and you wanna make sure that you have two layers. So you'll have the front and the back or the right and the left. There's only four pieces to this pattern. And you will do the body, which is gonna be the front and the back, which is the head and the body attached. You'll have the leg, one leg in the pattern, but you'll need to cut out four. The same with the arm. You'll have one arm, but you'll need to cut out four. And they will be the right and the left and the same with the ears. You'll need four of those for the right and left. And you can see here how I'm drawing it out to save as much fabric as possible. So I squeeze it all in there and then I will cut that out. You want to make sure your fabric's pinned so it's the layers are together and they don't slide or anything. Sometimes fleece slides or buckles as you can see with the pins. So I saved a pretty much chunk of fabric there and here I have it all cut out and I'm showing you where they would go. And those two lines that I made will be inserted into the body and you will leave, it's probably about an inch, but I will mark it on the pattern so you'll be able to tell. Same with the ears. And I'm showing you exactly where you would sew and you would sew the top of the head and around. And of course you leave the two markings open. Now I'm preparing my doll to be embroidered, the face. That's a whole different subject. If you do not have an embroidery machine, you can either embroider by hand and stitch the eyes, the nose and the mouth or you can paint them on. Acrylic paints work well. Here I'm embroidering it and I'm showing you the level of where the needle should be centered. And there's the pretty vintage doll. This one is going to be a vintage doll that I made for my dear friend. So you can easily paint your own face. You just want to make sure it's proportioned. Now, I'm showing you how to sew it, which would be the right sides in. and you leave the spacings for the arms and for the ears. The bottom is opened and you'll see. Right here I'm making little cuts so the ears open up and it's, it's smooth. 
there's no lumps or bumps. So you wanna just make little cuts around the edges that would be very taut so it's smooth. And anyone who sews knows this. And I'm putting them inside out. I'm going to stuff them a little bit and then sew the inner part of the ear. And you'll see that in a moment. Right there, that's where I'll sew the inner part I'm showing you with the sewing machine. You could stitch that also by hand. And if you don't have a sewing machine, you can sew this by hand. And there you go, that's the inside. It just gives it a little cleaner look. Doesn't have to be perfect. And you don't even, it's not even necessary. You can leave the doll's ears just stuffed. If you do not put an inner ear, you can sew it shut. So this is showing you that they would go on the inside and you would turn it inside out. However, there is a better way to do it. All you have to do is sew the ears straight directly on one side. Here I'm sewing it on her face, but you sew them backwards so it will open up correctly when you turn it inside out. And here I am pinning them so they don't get sewn when I sew them together, the two, the front and the back. You wanna pin it to make sure it's secure. So now I'm going to sew all the way around the head, all the way down to the neck and down to the top marking of the arm. And here I'm stuffing the arms now. So basically it's halfway sewn and those ears are pinned underneath. Here I am making little cuts and make sure that you don't cut the thread because then you'll have to re-sew it. But this just makes it smoother in the curves. When you sew the two halves together, of course, the front of the foot is going to be facing you. So the seam will be in the front, not on the side like the arms. The arms seams will be on the sides and the legs will be facing, facing you in the front. And you'll see what I mean. I mean, it's obvious once you sew it, you're going to see which way the legs go. And I also sew a stitch for the elbow. Those are usually for rag dolls and you can make this more of a rag doll and not stuff it so tightly. I like it because it makes it a little bendable. Their arms can bend and their legs at the knee can bend. And then you want to sew it shut at the top. It makes it easier so the stuffing doesn't come out. I don't know if I did that in the video. I think I might have, we'll see.
the best way would be to, to go underneath and to the hole and then put the arm there and then stitch it. Because when you turn it inside out, you'll be able to tell if you cross the arms over that they will come out the right way. So put them in through the bottom and into the hole of the armpit hole and then stitch it. Now you're going to turn her inside out or right side in. <laughs> And there you have it. Now the legs, you will sew on after you stuff her. And here I'm making a little, couple little slits under the armpits to make them more movable and smoother, not so tight. Just don't cut the threads. Now we'll stuff the legs here. It takes a lot of stuffing, actually. So, you know, I have it in bulk, so I can't, I couldn't even tell you how many bags you would need. It's all your preference, too. If you want to make her more of a rag doll, you can use less, like I said earlier. And you will sew her horizontal the legs with the seam in the front just to seal the stuffing I mean it's not necessary but I do it makes it much easier because the hardest part is when you stuff the doll and you try to put the legs that are attached to the body underneath the sewing machine. It might be better even to do it by hand. There's times that I've done it by hand and times that I've used, used the sewing machine and I have broken needles doing that because the doll was pretty much stuffed and then I had to put all those layers under the sewing machine needle and it was kind of rough at times. So I like to either use an industrial machine or do it by hand or put less stuffing in towards the bottom where you're going to sew the legs on. She's got a really cute face. I designed her face too and made an embroidery file. I love doing that too. I just use Ink Stitch on Inkscape. It's free because embroidery programs are very expensive. That's on my list <laughs> one of these days. Okay, so I showed you, you can see where I stitched her and I did use the sewing machine. So you would put less stuffing at the bottom there. And you can also make the little knee bends right there where I'm pointing. And she's about 22 inches. So she's a pretty big doll and there you go. You can also put darts on the side for her waist to give her a waist. And I'm showing some fabrics that I'm going to use. However, I changed my mind. I used her on the other doll. I used those fabrics on that doll 
that I'm going to make there. She's another vintage doll. And she's completed too. She's beautiful. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. And here's the end result. Next, we'll show how to put her hair on and the little wings and shoes and we'll dress her up. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.